I had really hoped to have beautiful Mary Pickford ringlets for this video, but <laughs> the humidity did not agree with that decision. <laughs> Hi everyone, Kate here, and today I'm going to be sharing with you some of my top tips for sleeping comfortably in curlers. I've been setting my hair overnight in curlers for about 10 years now, and I've come up with a variety of techniques to make that process a little more bearable. Now, I don't talk about it much on my channel, but I do suffer from a variety of chronic illnesses, which in turn affect my sleep quality, and my... <laughs> My circadian rhythm is so messed up. I have chronic insomnia, so I don't fall asleep until, like, 9 a.m. some days. <sighs> yeah, that's about as fun as it sounds. <laughs> so, getting as much sleep and being as well-rested as possible is absolutely essential to me functioning, like, even at a, at a low level. However, I love vintage hairstyling. I have had a long love affair with vintage do's and styles and curling techniques and all that fun stuff. I love it. I just, I love it. The problem is to replicate most of these vintage styles requires curling. My hair is naturally very, very straight and it's rather thin. So even to get some of the straight styles, I almost have to pre-curl it just to get enough body in it to be able to look full. I think it looks a lot fuller on camera usually because I curl it. Overnight setting your hair is a very vintage way of, of curling your hair and I find it takes a lot less energy than working with a curling iron, plus there's no risk of heat damage. So as I don't want to use a curling iron and I really want curly hair, and I also really want to sleep well, I've learned various ways to adapt curling techniques to allow for a better night's sleep. Now the type of curler can make a big difference in terms of how comfortable it is to sleep in. Some people swear by pillow rollers, but I've always found them a little too bulky to be comfortable. I don't know if this is partly just because I have really long hair, so when you roll it up, there's a fair a fair lump there. But I've I've never been a big fan of pillow rollers. I like the idea, but for me, they don't seem to work. As a flat curler is going to typically be less obtrusive than a big puffy one, my curler of choice is my 1930s homemade curlers. This is actually a style that I've also seen in about the 1910s, so it works for a variety of decades. It's not just a 1930s thing. I'll put a link to my video tutorial on how to make these down in the description. They're great. I love them. They don't produce the most perfect curl, but they produce like a good enough curl to work for most, most purposes. If you have short to mid-length hair, traditional pin curls are another good sort of flat option. As long as you make sure that the pins are placed so that they won't stab you in the head, <laughs> it, that can be surprisingly comfortable. I actually used to do pin curls when my hair was a little shorter, and I didn't find them too bad to sleep in at all. Now, if you're using a different type of curler, you do want to go for the smallest curler possible, the smallest diameter size. The idea here is that we're eliminating bulk. The bigger the lump you're lying on, the more uncomfortable it's going to be. Also, small curlers are typically more historically accurate. A lot of historical curlers were pretty, pretty tiny, so. <laughs> the last thing you want to consider when choosing what curler to use is that material matters. It almost goes without saying, but something made out of a hard material like plastic or metal is going to be less comfortable than something made out of a soft, squishy material, such as my homemade curlers or something like rag curls. Although I hate rag curls. I have, I have definite feelings about rag curls. <laughs> the most important factor in terms of how comfortably you're going to sleep is curler placement. Well, you may want to do a very specific set pattern if you're going for a very specific look, especially something like a more sculptural style from like the 30s, 40s, 50s. In general, if you have medium to long hair, there's some flexibility in terms of where you place your curlers. Let's discuss a few possible placement patterns. I was thinking about demonstrating these patterns myself, but my my hair's pretty thin. It takes like four curlers, so I'm going to be doing some 
very amateurish cartoons to try to illustrate what I'm talking about. <laughs> if you are a side sleeper, you'll want to position the curlers along the top of the head, stretching down the back. This setting pattern will also work for front sleepers, because usually if you're a front sleeper, your head is still turned to one side, like the actual head to pillow contact is, is sideways. Uh, you don't usually sleep like smothering yourself into the pillow. <laughs> kind of crush your face that way, so, you know. I mean, maybe you do, I don't know, but I, usually front sleepers still have their head turned. <laughs> if you're a back sleeper, Put the curlers on the top of the head with any extra hair that won't fit in those top curlers curled down along the sides. Now, if you're like me and you sleep like a rotisserie chicken, <laughs> that's my sleeping style, <laughs> rotisserie chicken. You're going to want to put most of the curlers right on top of your head, so no matter which way you rotate throughout the night, you're never directly lying on the curlers. If you have super thin hair like me, you can also sometimes get away putting them along the base. Uh, then they kind of nestle in between like the curve of your head and the curve of the neck, so again, you're not lying directly on the curlers. That only works with fairly thin hair though. Sometimes if you if you have thicker hair, you could do a few along here and then some most of it up here. That's another another option. But the idea here is that we're leaving all of this area, except like right at the front, all of this area should be flat. The curlers are either up here or they're tucked, tucked underneath here. When it comes to curls, the hair around the face has the most visual impact, so consider putting more curlers around here and less at the back of the head where it would impede sleep. If you're going to be wearing a hat, you actually don't need to curl the back sections, uh, it, like a close fitting hat, like a closure or something of that nature, because really all you're going to see is the hair around the face, so you can totally get away with just a few, a few curlers there. A combo of curlers around the face and then a braid at the back is a very often seen historical setting pattern. If you keep an eye out in old movies, sometimes you'll see this. I mean, the heroine never has curlers. The heroine wakes up with perfect hair, but sometimes some of the side characters, especially like an older woman, will you will see this in old movies. I had a few comments back on my Edwardian opera singer hair care routine video about how she achieved her hairstyle, and the more I look at the photo, the more I think this is probably how she did it. It definitely looks styled for the photos. I think some people were thinking, oh, it's like her hair just naturally looks like that. Like, no, I'm pretty sure it's styled. Uh, to me, it really does look like she's curled the hair around her face. And then the kind of the waves at the back are probably from it being in a long braid. Again, purposely done. Like, <laughs> there was some styling involved. She didn't wake up and look like that. <laughs> This curler braid combo is actually a pretty good everyday set. Uh, it's very comfortable to sleep on. You're never going to be directly lying on curlers. Although it does work best if you put your hair regularly in an updo or if you wear a hat with an updo. I guess updo is the key here. Because <laughs> the rest of the hair pinned back, snug against the head, and then soft curls around the face. Very pretty. Just before we leave curler placement, there is one other way which sometimes works. This only works if you have a lot of hair. You have very thick hair, you can use a lot of curlers without it resulting in like a really frizzy set. And that is to basically cover your head in curlers so that there are no gaps. You're not lying on any lumps because the, the curler bulk is almost fo forming like a solid pillow around your head. <laughs> Um, because then, then there's no lumps, then you're, you're lying on a flat, solid surface. It doesn't work for everybody, it's really only going to work for a very select few people, so the, I almost hesitate to mention it, but <laughs> it is an option. It's, a, it's something to try if you do have a lot of hair, uh, especially if you have a lot of hair and you can't just have like a few little curlers up top. Try putting them everywhere. This is kind of a situation where something like a foam roller might be the most comfortable way to try this too, because those have sort of like a 
long flat side rather than a tight ball. So anyway, something, something to consider. One thing to be aware of is how tight you're rolling your curlers. You do want them snug enough so they're not going to fall out or shift around too much during the night, but you don't want them so tight that they're pulling on the hair. If curlers are wound too tightly, it's going to be painful. <laughs> no, like, don't put yourself through that. <laughs> don't do it. It's not worth it. <laughs> not only will you not be able to sleep, you're going to be in pain. It can often lead to headaches. All in all, not a good time. It's not worth it in my opinion. <laughs> no, you don't, you don't need to be in pain. <laughs> not from that anyway. I mean, I'm in pain from all kinds of other stuff, but I don't need to be in pain for my curlers. <laughs> it's unnecessary. Too tight curlers is a surefire recipe for a bad night's sleep and a headache in the morning. <laughs> Sometimes what also happens is you just have like one strand that's too tight you can feel like the curler feels kind of loose, but there's something pulling. That's usually because one strand is being wound a little more tightly than the other. So the only thing to do then is just unwind the curler and we rewind it back up. It'll, it'll save you in the long run. <laughs> Spend an extra 30 seconds, fix that curler. One last trick is to use a headscarf over top of your curlers. Not only will this prevent excess frizz from forming, but it's also going to keep your curlers a lot more secure Then they're going to be a lot less likely to move around during the night. Like you're not going to have a loose one at the back, perhaps rotate under your head, or at least there's less of a chance if there's a, a headscarf keeping them kind of bound in place. <laughs> It also provides less friction against the pillow, so your head and your neck can move a little more naturally. And no, boudoir caps, unfortunately, are not a good substitute for a headscarf. <laughs> they look adorable, but they are really not practical for sleeping in. These are more for going down for breakfast in the morning to cover up your curlers or your messy bed head. They're very cute, though. <laughs> One other last sort of bonus tip, which is not directly related to curling your hair, but that is saving your curls. I typically wear my hair the night after I've curled it loosely bound up, uh, keeping the hair not crushed, but just sort of secure to help preserve the curls for another day. The less nights you have to sleep in curlers, the more comfortable you're going to be. <laughs> I typically curl my hair maybe once a week, and the set lasts for about half that time, especially if I'm doing updos. So that's the end of my little list today. Uh, if you have any other tips or suggestions that perhaps I've forgotten to mention or just have never heard of before, I haven't heard of everything, uh, please let me know down in the comments below. Always looking for more tips to sleep comfortably <laughs> with curls. Boop, 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 boop. As always, thank you for watching, and I will see you guys next time. Bye! This video is made possible through the generous support of my Patreon members. Thank you.